Welcome back to the Family Art Project Depth and Distance series. And I truly mean it when I say welcome back. We're so glad to have you. So for today's project, we're going to be exploring roots. Now, roots is kind of a interesting word. It has two different meanings or ways of thinking about it. We have your roots where they're for creating stability and nourishment and growing in the ground to create uh, plants and flowers and trees and grow these big structures in nature. We also have roots, which is a path or a journey that you might take on a trail or a, a journey you might take in life. So to create this art project, we're gonna use our bodies as our canvas. I'm gonna use my head as a silhouette for my drawing. You, you might use your head, shoulders, knees, or toes, whichever body part that may interest you to reflect your idea. We're also thinking about what in nature have we connected to that has helped shape us today. So we're really diving deep into this project. But before we get into the art making of our project, first Mallory, she's going to do a storytelling to help us get inspired to think about our roots and how we are connected to nature. Hello. For today's storytelling, I'm going to walk you through a guided visualization. A guided visualization is a mindfulness technique to awaken each of our senses. Sight, touch, hearing, taste, smell, to bring warm feelings to our body through the use of our imagination. And we're going to get prepared for the art making by doing this and we're going to visualize the different parts of nature that have made us who we are, that have shaped who we are today. And for this visualization, I'm going to ask you to recall memories so we can revisit these special parts of nature that we feel connected to. Remember that nature can be found in the most unexpected of places, so maybe you're just visiting a puddle that you passed that's collected leaves, or maybe you're visiting a dandelion that grows in a sidewalk crack. Though you could also be, a, be visiting a beautiful mountain landscape or a beach that's special to your family. Maybe you're visiting a vast desert alive in your imagination or an enchanted forest. Wherever it is, it's important that the places is unique to you. What's important is that the place is unique to you. As I read you the visualization, you can choose to either close your eyes or you can rest your gaze downwards and lose the focus of the objects around you, soften that gaze so that what you're really focusing on is the images you create in your own head. I will read and you're going to sit as comfortably as you can. Maybe you want to stretch out your back, move your neck a little bit, because how you're sitting is how you're going to be transported to the very nature that's made you or that inspires you to be who you are. Sit in your chair, sink into that chair or rug or bed. In the first place you are going to remember in nature is a time that you felt safe. A time that you felt truly like you belonged. Remember a time in nature where you felt like you could be 100% you. Or maybe you want to imagine a new place in nature that inspires you to be who you are. Imagine your rug or chair or bed, whatever you're sitting on, floats up. Or maybe it's the entire building you're in. It all of a sudden floats up off the ground. And from the air, you see mountains and oceans and beaches and forests. You see meadows of flowers, and you see animal grazing on the grass. You see the tops of trees, and you see sand from the desert. You see ice thick on lakes, and in the next moment you see ice melting from little drips of icicles. Do any of these places give you a feeling of belonging? Now, imagine you land in one of those spots. Where are you? You're in a space in nature where you feel like you belong. Where is that? What do you see? 
What do you smell? Take time reacquainting or exploring where you are. What do you feel underneath your feet? When it's time to leave, imagine that you are able to take some part of that experience with you. But you can't take it all back with you and you don't have a camera, so you'll have to keep that part of nature in your body. How are you going to hold nature in your body? Find a part of where you are that you can move your body to. Maybe you see a tree and you can reach up your arm and feel that tree stored at the very tips of your fingers all the way to the tips of your toes. Maybe you see a rock you can huddle like. You can shape yourself hard and rumbly like a rock. Where in the body will you keep that special memory with nature? Are you gonna keep it in the neck? Are you gonna keep it in your throat so you can sing about that nature later? Are you gonna keep it in your heart? Imagine yourself going back to your sitting spot to be taken to your next destination. Now, we're going to a spot in nature where we feel absolutely wild. We're going to a spot in nature where we feel wild and free. Is there a place in nature that you feel like you can go and run so fast that you fly into the trees? Maybe you could swing from the vines, or you could honk with the geese, or you could sing songs with whales over great distances. Where in nature can you be absolutely wild? Wherever it is you land, here, slowly coming to the ground. Take your time being with this place. What textures do you feel in your hands? What does the weather feel like? Is there any food awaiting you? What colors do you see? Are there any animals greeting you with sounds? Again, just before it's time to go, we'll visit one last special spot in this place. Is there a flower you'd like to get close to? A river? Before you leave, think about how you're going to remember this special part of nature. And now shape yourself with whatever you are close to. So if you see a flower, Seed, maybe you want to be the seed and you unfurl so it's stored in your memory, in your body. Where does that flower live in your body? Does the flower live at the top of your head so it can grow a field of flowers? Do seeds disperse all through your toes along your journey? Do you carry pebbles in your heart? Do you carry water through your veins? Where in nature do you feel most wild? Where is that wild spot in nature kept in your body? You can make as many trips as you'd like in your flying device. Maybe you can visit places that make you feel loved or places that make you feel curious or places that you know your family loves and that you would like to share with. When you're ready, you'll open your eyes and we'll begin creating collages of some of the special places we visited. So as I mentioned before, I want to use my head as my reference for the silhouette and image that I'm going to draw or create art around. Fortunately, I have a roommate who is helping me draw out my image. So 
So now I have my image cut out, or at least my image drawn out rather, and I have an assortment of materials around me, some paint, a paint brush that's kind of like a sponge brush, some leaf cuttings and recycled paper, and some old dried paint that I'm gonna use to create my image on my silhouette. I have a lot of fun stuff that's all really personal to me. Rather than show you how I'm going to make this artwork like how I would in our previous videos for Depth and Distance, I'm actually going to tell you a bit about myself and uh, my roots and my roots uh, which impact the materials that I chose and why I chose them to make this art piece. There were about 10, 11, or 12 fellow artist apprentices were all about the same age, 12 and 13, uh, that got to work on this large mural together. And we were led by a group of amazing professional artists who had been, of course, making artwork and murals for years. And this experience was so inspiring. It, admittedly, it was a bit intimidating to work with so many talented young artists, but uh, I got so much out of it. And I didn't realize at the time that it would lead me down a path of making paintings and working with youth later on in my career. But I got to participate in this great program. Uh, and from here, I continued to do paintings. And as I got older, I continue to do these paintings now working as a teaching artist myself. So I've worked with a few programs to do murals with, uh, with uh, apprentice artists who got paid to make these murals. And one of the groups that I worked with are actually are on this collage here. So you'll see a couple of youth. I'm actually the young man on the left and everyone on my right are a group of the young artists that I assisted to make a mural. And they did all the hard labor. I just guided them in the process. So I really got to take roots from my home in Cincinnati and learn how to make murals. And as I got older, pay it forward and grow out my branches and lead youth into making artwork. That's honestly why I love roots so much because roots are a metaphor for really the process that I've undertaken and gone through as an artist. As I mentioned before, I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio, and the name of the neighborhood I grew up in is called Roselawn, and I love that word Roselawn. So I've always liked roses growing up. So in this collage here, I've placed a, a couple of roses so the red circles you see that I painted on earlier, those are images of roses. And I put together a rose out of old paint, old dried paint that came from a previous painting. So rather than throw that paint away, I decided to save it for one day to use it for something. I never knew what I would use it for, but now I found a perfect purpose for it. So using, again, my history in my home, my roots, it really grounds me and uh, has really shaped me into the person I am today, which is represented by the youth uh, that are on the crown of my collage. You may be wondering, why is there so much red? Well, I love red. Roses are one of my favorite flowers. And if you can recall, from my previous video, red is one of my favorite colors uh, that's represented in many ways throughout my artwork. Also even using a rose uh, from the button that I'm placing down now. This button is something I screen printed long time ago that I gave away for free to people uh, and now I'm also reusing as artwork here. So I've used all kinds of ways to create a rose. Paper, uh, old paint, and buttons. The, one of the last items that I'm placing on here is actually a small plant that died because I uh, didn't water it enough 
or maybe I actually overwatered it. I'm not sure, but it it didn't survive, and um, and but it's called a false, uh, rally. I could be pronouncing that wrong, so don't quote me on that. But I believe that's what it's called. Uh, I placed it where I did intentionally because the roots are right on top of the rows, which, as I mentioned before, it represents my home because my hometown I grew up in is called Roseline. So I wanted the roots to sit there and the branches and the leaves on this Foster Rally is on top of the youth artist uh, because it grows uh, and shows where I have gone to. After my roots grew into plants, it shows me where I've gone, um, which is from a young boy who did paintings in Roseline to now a young man who is showing youth how to make murals for their community. And that's really my story, my journey of how I, my roots um, being developed in Cincinnati, Ohio, has now blossomed in New York City as an adult. Here's my final image. I really love how it came out. It really tells my story and represents who I am and the roots that I have uh, and where I've come from.